In today's video, we're going to be exploring the most famous historical figures all the way from BC to AD. We'll witness the Crusades, the World Wars, and plenty of explosions. You're gonna wanna stay tuned to see the countless wars and battles fought in this video. And keep watching until the end because we're gonna have a sick giveaway. Now let's witness history. 2,000 years ago, one man conquered all of Europe and North Africa. His name, Julius Caesar. His son, of course, would open a famous pizzeria. Pizza, 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 pizza. The dictator of Rome would take out hundreds of barbarian tribes. Gaelic leader Vercingetorix would rise up, but he too would be felled. Ooh. All this conquering made Caesar quite the ladies man, winning him the heart of lovely lady Cleopatra. Oh my. This made others jealous, and they plotted to destroy Caesar. Caesar's man, Mark Antony, heard about the plan, and tried to warn Caesar, but it was too late. Brutus had already given him the Detroit Special, and he and the other senators started a chain of Roman civil wars. Flash forward 50 years, and there was a barn. Probably the most important barn of all time. Because inside the barn, Jesus Christ was born to Mary and Joseph. God had come to Earth. And this new religion spread like hotcakes. Okay, let's go. Constantine was the first Roman emperor to convert. And there were a lot more kings and emperors to come after him. Theoderic, king of the Ostrogoths, and the conqueror of Italy. Then there was Justinian I of the Byzantine Empire, who attempted to reestablish Rome Rome in all of her glory with his giant army. He also did a lot of judicial reform, made the laws simpler, but made a lot of people angry. <laughs> then, then King Charlemagne of the Franks, he built the Carolingian Empire. And who can forget about Otto I of the Holy Roman Empire? He conquered Italy again. <laughs> Mamma mia! Arguably more important than the kings was the Pope for history. And Urban II would change everything. He called for a holy crusade. What will you take? We will take Jerusalem! And the kings listened and were like, hey, that sounds like a vibe. Deus 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 but another figure was listening. Peter the Hermit. And he might have taken the word a little too seriously. He preached Pope Urban II's message to the common folk and started to assemble the people's army. Hold on there, soldier. You'd better stop and hear about this offer from HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and I was super excited to get this sponsorship because my wife Zelda and I are just normal subscribers to this. I love it because every single week we get fresh new ingredients for new recipes that we don't have to think about and can make quickly and efficiently. Nice. It saves money for us from ordering out when we're tired from a long day of work, and it also cuts down on our food waste because we end up using all the ingredients in the kit rather than buying a bunch of stuff and then using maybe three quarters of it when we meal prep. And that's another thing. We don't have to meal prep anymore because we have HelloFresh right there. We have tasty, delicious, healthy meals with a load of variety every single week. So trust me when I say HelloFresh is a great alternative. So click the link in the description or use my code POGHF131511, which is on screen now, and get 16 free meals plus free dessert for life while the subscription Description is active. Thanks so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching. Peter the Hermit and his ragtag army of peasants took off well before the professional crusader armies and, welp, got crushed immediately. Those that didn't die instantly got carted off into slavery. Luckily for Urban II, Godfrey of Bouillon, as well as the other crusader kings and their crusader army, managed to siege and successfully take the walls of Jerusalem from the Fatimids. Deus, Deus, Deus. And not too long later, the crusader knights lose Jerusalem. To the legend Legendary Saladin, baby! Naturally, Saladin's conquest would spark more crusades. So now we get our third crusade in a row. It's being led by King Philip II, King Frederick Barbarossa, and Richard the Lionheart who totally wasn't a furry. Bro, what are you talking about? These three are going on an epic adventure to recapture Jerusalem. Damn. And Barbarossa drowns before they even enter into a battle. Ooh. That 
that leaves us with a furry and a Frenchman. That could be the title of an Oscar winning movie. What? The Crusaders fought hard against the Muslim defenders, but the defenders were fierce. Thousands lay dead for both sides until Richard the Lionheart approach Saladin at the Treaty of Jaffa. They came to an agreement. Jerusalem's walls would be open to the Christian faith, but Muslims would remain in control. The Third Crusade was over, and let's move on from the Crusades. There's like 10 more of them and they get really dark. Now a few hundred years later, the British were attempting a sea invasion of Orleans in France. But one woman led the army to slaughter them. Joan of Arc famously said, go forward bravely, and fear nothing. And then she absolutely clapped some British cheeks. Let us commence forth. British? But she wasn't the only famous woman at this time. Queen Elizabeth I ruled at a time when it was most needed for the British. She expanded them into a world power, but other nations were her competitors. Spain had sent forward famous conquistadors like Hernan Cortes to colonize the world much like England was doing at the same time. Colonization would lead the world to be shaped and massive empires built. And the pirates freaking love this. Captain Kidd was paid by the British government to protect English trade routes and hunt the French. So he got double paid to plunder. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. Then of course there's Anne Bonny and Calico Jack, who stole their vessel and went on plundering, Anne being one of the very first female pirates. And who can forget the most famous of all? Blackbeard and his pirate crew. Reportedly, Blackbeard had strength that was near superhuman, and he would light his beard on fire when going into battle. Now, pirates weren't the only ones rebelling against the government. There was the American Revolution. George Washington was put in charge of the Continental Army, a ragtag group of military newbies. With only a few veterans, including himself from the French and Indian War, Washington had his work cut out for him. Not only that, there were traitors. Sussy baka. Like Benedict Arnold. Butcha. And his foe was mighty. General Cornwallis commanded the Redcoats. The British go into their standard line battle formation that they're accustomed to. But it's America time, baby. <laughs> The Continental Army uses hit and run tactics, spreading out their muskets and hitting the Redcoats one by one. But one British officer was on horseback when suddenly he got beheaded. American soldiers put a pumpkin on his head. Poor officer Ichabod Crane became the tail of the headless horseman. The war was over. And later on, Georgie Boy would become the president. Thomas Jefferson here joined his cabinet, as did Alexander Hamilton. But there was trouble brewing in Europe while America got started. Robespierre went a little crazy with the guillotine during the French Revolution, and then Napoleon entered the scene and pretty much went ham on all of Europe. Vive la France, my friends. Baguettes, baguettes, baguettes. Napoleon was kind of the 19th century goat. It took the Duke of Wellington and Gebard Lebrecht von Blücher to destroy him at the Battle of Waterloo, and thus Napoleon's reign was over. Now America was having her own problems a few years later. Lincoln here had his presidency uh, turned awry when the Civil War began. Robert E. Lee here was the Confederate general, and Ulysses S. Grant was probably the most famous Union general. And I learned a little rhyme about the war when I was in college. In 61, the war begun. In 62, the bullets flew. In 63, the slaves were free. Yay! In 64, the South was tore. And in 65, the war was over. I guess they didn't have a rhyme for the last one. Now the next major war would be far more modern and it would be fought over a sandwich. Um, no, no, um, no. Archduke Franz Ferdinand was gooning around in his little motor car, dodging assassination attempts left and right. When suddenly he decided to make a stop outside of a sandwich shop, where Gabriel Princip, one of the assassins, had given up to go have some beer and a sandwich. Gabriel shot him. And that's an oversimplified reason as to why World War I started. Here's our mini trench warfare diorama. For the Brits, we've got ourselves Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig and his French ally, Commander-in-Chief Joseph Joffrey. And on the German side of things, Paul von Hindenburg and Eric Ludendorff. Let's give them some men in these trenches.
These four men put their soldiers through some of the toughest and most horrible warfare known to man. Oh, and we can't fail to mention that we have Lawrence of Arabia, one of the coolest people in history, sabotaging supplies in the Middle East during World War I. Trench warfare lasted for the majority of World War I, and on the Western Front, it was even more brutal. But that didn't stop. A small mustached man named Charlie Chaplin from making fun of it. The OG dark comedian. He's not the only little mustachioed man running around during World War I. I think you guys know where this is going. Adolf Brickler was a messenger during World War I and in 20 years would be taking over Germany. And we'd get the sequel everyone was waiting for, baby, World War II. Now Brickler was relying heavily on the Africa Corps for the desert fighting, and they were being led by Erwin Rommel, AKA the Desert Fox. He was mainly competing against British General Bernard Montgomery. However, Brickler would soon order Erwin Rommel back to Germany and then transfer him back to France where he was put in charge of building up the Atlantic Wall, aka the defenses to hold out against D-Day. Time to build the Atlantic Wall. Rommel's defenses were in place. However, Eisenhower and Charles de Gaulle would be sending in the Allied forces in mass in LCVP Higgins boats. The Americans, British, New Zealanders, Australians, Canadians, and more charged the beaches of Normandy. And true war hero, fighting Jack Churchill, takes the lead with a freaking broadsword. And even notorious war criminal Jeff makes an appearance. Yeah. But while the boys storm Normandy Beach. There's another theater of war against the Japanese. The general in the Pacific was Douglas MacArthur, this classic pipe. And one of the most famous battles for its brutality, the Battle of Hacksaw Ridge. It displayed the courage of Desmond Doss, medical war hero of the Marines. He went up and down Hacksaw Ridge, saving soldiers one at a time. Of course, outside of combat, we had other war heroes, scientists like Alan Turing, and his famous computer, the Turing Machine, right here, which helped code break so many of Japanese and Germany's coded messages. The father of modern computers. Of course, there were other scientists too on a bit more of a destructive scale. Like Robert Oppenheimer right here, who of course had help from other historical figures when developing the atomic bomb. We have Madame Curie, radiation scientist who died to her own craft. Bruh. And who's this little goofball? Albert Einstein. There were even German scientists like Vernon von Braun, who through Operation Paperclip joined the Americans, and he helped to develop in the future the rocket technology to take these three astronauts to the moon. Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. Now these three men could not have made this mission happen without the help of mathematician Judith Love Cohen, who would later go ahead and give birth to Tenacious D and Kung Fu Panda member Jack Black. What a truly legendary woman. Of course, the moon was really a dream of this man, John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States, who sadly was assassinated by this man, Lee Harvey Oswald. Totally. Yep, totally. Wasn't the CIA. Nope, no CIA involvement at all. No, sir. But you know what? We've been talking about a lot of famous men. I think it's time we reflect on some of the very important women in the modern era. We, of course, have the iconic Frida Kahlo, the painter. Florence Nightingale the founder of modern nursing, who once said, I never once took or gave an excuse. Or how about Amelia Earhart, who got eaten by crabs? Or then there's people like Anne Frank, who stayed brave during even the most horrible of adversity. Or Jane Goodall, famous primatologist and anthropologist, who loved the monkeys. Monkey. These ladies were all rock stars, so let's give them the greatest rock concert of all time. We got them some nice cushy seating with some soda pop and popcorn. Now let's show you the bands. John, Paul, George, and Ringo of the Beatles. Freddie Mercury, joined by David Bowie to recreate the famous Live Aid concert. Elvis Presley, The King, with surprise guest star Rick Astley. I apologize. Can't forget about Ella Fitzgerald. And finally, Kurt Cobain. The music was met with thunderous applause from the ladies. And it looks like the crabs got to Amelia Earhart again. 
But let's do an encore of some pickup sports games. What is these? A basketball has landed on the court. And here come the players. Shaquille O'Neal with his right hand man Kobe. Rookie Michael Jordan along with veteran Michael Jordan after he became the GOAT. The false prophet GOAT LeBron James as a rookie and LeBron James as a veteran. And let's not forget about shooting god Stephen Curry. But basketball ain't everything. Let's bring out some other sports. Let's put a training dummy right here and stick Muhammad Ali against it. Float like a butterfly baby. And Evil Knievel is here to do a couple crazy tricks because his bike won't really fit on the stage. Tom Brady, NFL GOAT, fight me on that. And David Hasselhoff, what are you doing here? Oh, but look at those delectable abs. Initiating launch sequence. And let's bring out Oprah and have her give a talk show. Um, who's she gonna talk to? Um, baby Jesus, uh, greatest guest she could ever possibly have. And you know what? Let's end the night on a calming note with the legendary Bob Ross painting us a beautiful picture. Now these ladies have had a great night, but they're not the only ones changing the world for the better. We've also got a lot of human rights activists. Nelson Mandela, who ended apartheid in South Africa. Who can forget about MLK? Who led the march on Selma? and had the famous I Have a Dream speech, or Rosa Parks, whose peaceful protest was heard around the world. And I, I don't have a bus, so I, I'm gonna have her sit on the back of a Sherman tank. I, I think it gives the same message. And who can forget about Al Capone, who gave us the right to drink a ton of bootleg liquor. I don't know, I put this in here so the mob doesn't come after me. These activists did amazing things for the world. And I'm including Muhammad Ali, because he was actually a seriously awesome person. Most of the time, the good they do is ruined by politicians. Not saying all politicians are bad, but <laughs> most of them. We got Donald Trump, Michelle and Barack Obama, Boris Yeltsin, regular Joe Biden, and Dark Brandon, the queen and her husband, who I think is now the king. I don't know. British people confuse me. British. And I don't want to finish this video off with boring old politicians. So here is Marshal Zhukov, famous Soviet general, and helps strategize over the Battle of Kursk. I forgot to add him to the World War II section, so he's at the very end. All right, guys. Wow, this table is a freaking disaster. This was one of the most heavily organized videos I've ever done. It took forever to record. It took a lot of money to buy all these minifigs, but god dang it, it was worth it. This was so freaking fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now let's check out the giveaway. For today's giveaway, we're giving away a collection of different eras of minifigures from this video. The Queen, Douglas MacArthur, Bob Ross, Kurt Cobain, Freddie Mercury, LeBron James, Bigfoot, who didn't make the cut, and Frank, and we're also going to throw in the astronauts and Charles de Gaulle here. If you guys want to enter into win, just comment down below your favorite minifigure that you saw during the entirety of this video. It doesn't even have to be a famous person. It could be World War II soldier number three. <laughs> also, hit the like button and subscribe. Do all three of those things and you will be entered in to win the giveaway. Also, huge thank you to all of our channel members. Your names are on Assault on Hoth. Particularly, thank you to Matt and finally McNair, who joined the channel recently. If you guys want to get your names on the legendary Assault on Hoth set, just join the channel memberships. It's very appreciated and helps me make these videos. Thank you guys so much again. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you on the next one. Peace! I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.